Hey, this is Asaf Levavi from Nikinerf.com and it's time for another viewer request. And in this video, we're going to learn a fingerstyle arrangement I've made especially for you guys and girls on request of Buried Alive by Avenged Sevenfold. Now, it's not the entire song, it's just the intro, but the intro is beautiful and I think it makes a very nice fingerstyle arrangement. So, first, I'm going to play it for you and then we're going to break it down lick by lick with tabs on the screen and everything. I'm going to show you step by step how to play this. So first, it goes like this. So are you ready to start? Alright, before we begin playing, we need to tune the guitar down to drop D, meaning that we need to detune the E string, the E bass, the 6th string. We need to detune it down to D, a whole step down from E to D, that's about 2 frets. So we don't have uh, minus 1 and minus 2 frets. So what we do if we don't have a tuner in hand, we play the D string and then we play the E bass and detune it until both notes align. Listen. See? They're the same note now. Again. Listen. Try to see in your mind's eye how the notes come together. Okay? Okay? You'll hear it. For example, if it's only a bit out of tune, it will sound awful. But then, you detune a little farther, and they become the same note. One last time. See? Same note. So, drop detuning <clears throat> with a lower D bass. So, you start by this leg, okay, which is a slide from 8 to 10 on the B string using your third finger because you're going to need to put your first finger on 8 on the E string, <clears throat> okay, so this, okay, and then 8 on the E string. Now, when you slide, you play the A bass along with it, okay, the fifth string. So, slide from 8 to 10 on the B string, okay? And then put your finger on 8 on the E string and play the E string on 8, the B string on 10 again, okay? So it's... That's the first lick. Okay, slide, then E string on 8, B string on 10 again. And play the A bass at the start. Then take your pinky and pull off from 10 to 8 on the E string. Okay, so it's... And then play the B string and the E string again. Okay, still on 10 and 8. Okay, that's the first phrase. 
then pull off, B string, E string. Then take your second finger, play 10 on the D bass, okay, on the E string. So it's... Now, bar the 7th fret, put your 2nd finger on the 8th fret of the B string and play this, okay? It's again B string, E string, B string. Now on 8, 7 and 8, 7 is the bar. And you play the A string again at the start on 7, an E note, okay? so. Okay, the B string along with the A string. Then with your pinky, play 10 on the B string. And then take the pinky off. You can take the bar off as well and play on the B string 8 to 10. Okay, but this time it's not a straight slide. It's two notes. It's... Okay? It's two notes, it's eight and 10 with a slide between them. Okay, the first slide was just a slide, so it was just 10, okay, on the B string. But this one is eight and 10. So it's this. Okay, got it? So what we have so far is this. Open A string. 10 on the D bass, then bar the 7th fret and put your 2nd uh, finger on 8 on the B string and you're actually playing E minor here, okay, only you don't use these two strings, so... and then 10 on the B string, then slide from 8 to 10 on the B string, okay? So what we have here is this. Okay? Now, if you don't if you don't hear what the 10 on the the it's a it's a C note. What's the C note doing there? It's just a transition from Okay, it's a small bass solo there. So it's Okay? It's a bass move. So, uh, the next lick, we were here. Now you bar the fifth fret, you put your third finger on seven on the G string, and you play strings three, two, and three. The G string, the B string, and the G string. Now, as before, you play the A bass along with the first note, now it's on five, it's D, you're playing D sus two. Okay, you're playing D sus 2. Okay, so uh, strings 3, 2, and 3. Then with your first, uh, yeah, with your first finger, you pull off from 6 to 5 on the B string. And then comes the first ending. Okay, now there are two endings to this line. Um, actually, there are two endings to each line we're going to learn today. There's a line, there's a first ending, then you play the line again, then you play the second ending. Okay, that's kind of the motif of this composition. You have a line and you have two endings, so you play each line twice. There's one line where there's only one ending, but you still play that line twice. Okay, so that's basically the structure of this intro. So uh, we've reached this spot. Okay, which is the place where the line ends and the ending begins. Okay, you, if this isn't clear yet, it will be clear once we learn both endings and then we'll connect them and put them together. So, you play this, then pull off on the B string from 6 to 5. Okay, and then the first ending is just continuing this line and playing the third and second strings again. Okay, so it's... Got it? Pull off and then the G string and B strings again. 
And then you play this. Okay, this is the next phrase. So, on the A bass, you play three and two. Okay? And then you put your... Um, Actually, it's any two fingers. You can put first finger, second finger, second finger, third finger, third finger and pinky, uh, whichever is more comfortable for you. I prefer putting the second and third fingers on the B string and the G string on five, both of them on five. And then you play the G string along with the A string and the B string. Okay? And then... You pull off your finger from the B string, so it's 5 to 0. So it's G string, B string, pull off to 0. Okay? What? So it's... Okay? And then, you still let those notes ring. He's walking in reverse. Okay. Now that that's over with, so you play. You let the B string and the A string, you let them ring, and you play on the G string. Seven, slide to five, and then you play the B string again. Then on the G string you play five, slide to four, then five on the D string. Okay, so it's seven to five, open B string, five to four on the G string, five, uh, five on the D string. Okay, and your goal is to keep the A bass ringing throughout. So, okay, the A bass kept ringing. Try to hear that. Okay? Actually, because I played it slowly, the A kind of faded out, so try to listen to the A string. Okay? Still ringing. So, that's, uh, that's the kind of the sound you want to take out of it. So, that's the first ending. Um, Okay, so we get this. Okay, and then you begin again, so you just slide all the way up to 10 this time. So it's... Um, to here because remember this is where the first ending began and the first ending was this okay the first ending started with the G and B strings it wasn't and then first ending the first ending was continuing the line this is where the line ends second ending is this Okay, now you play this, okay, and that's right away, that's the continuing of the line. So um, you're already with this shape, okay, so, so you play the A and G strings, okay, as they are. Okay, on 5 on the A string and 7 on the G string. Then you take that 2 frets up to 7 and 10. Then you take that 1 fret up to uh, 7 and 10, 7 and 9. And then you uh, take that up to 8 and 10. Okay, that's the reason I said 10, because I was thinking of the next note. So it's uh, 5 and 7, 7 and 9, 8 and 10. Then you play 
You're still barring, by the way. You, you play the B string on eight. You use your pinky for ten on the B string. Okay, so it's. And then you bar the seventh fret. You put your second finger on nine on the B string. You play the A bass on nine and B string on uh, the, the A bass on seven and the B string on nine. And you hammer on your pinky on 10 on the B string, pull that off to 9, pull that off to 7, hammer it on again on 9. Or play the 9 at the end there. So it's either or, okay, you can, pl uh, you can pluck, you can pick the final note, or just hammer it on, okay? In the original, they, uh, they hammer it on, so... Okay, so A10, legato line. So together it sounds like this. Octaves, A10, legato line. Okay, legato is when the notes blend in together, one after the other. So instead of staccato, where it is when the notes are separate. Okay, legato is when the notes are in sequence, okay, just flowing. And these are octaves, by the way, so. Missed with the pinky there, but you get the point. So, let's play the first part with both endings, okay? And congratulations for reaching this point, okay? You're doing a very good job so far, so. for the second part. The second part begins like this. Okay? That's with the first ending and then you play it again. And then the second ending. Okay? And you play that twice. Okay? With both ending. So um, you play the open A string again and you slide from 3 to 5 on the E string. And then you play 3 and 5 again on the E string. Okay? Simple as that. Mm -hmm. And then you put your second finger on 2 on the A string. Okay? The B bass. Uh, the B bass note. And then using um, your pinky and first fingers you play three one three one on the B string and then using your third finger you play two and zero on the G string okay so it's so it's this okay now the first ending is barring the third fret you play the A bass along with okay five three five on the E string okay so and then this you play the open D string you slide to seven along with it okay slide from five to seven and then hammer on five to seven then play seven again okay so it's Okay, same notes, three different effects. Okay, a slide, a hammer on, and a single note. Okay, that's the maximum use of two notes. So, that's the first ending. Bar, slide. Okay, then you play this again. 
with uh, five three five, and then three one three one two zero, and then the second ending is this. Um, you play the open D string again, and you play two three on the E string. Okay, now the next note is five, but there are violins in the background that play uh, a harmony, so I decided to play the entire harmony here. So it's, it's not the entire harmony, but some harmony. Uh, so I harmonize the A note with seven on the B string. Okay, so it's A and F sharp, which, is, uh, which are both inside the D chord. So... Uh, so you play two, three, and then five on the E string and seven on the B string. And the D bass keeps ringing. So, so your ear hears a chord there, okay? Even though it's just the bass note going on and the solo. So suddenly there's a whole harmony there. So, and then you play a C chord and you play the bass along with the first note and you just play strings one two three one two okay and you play the bass along with the first note okay so what you get is this okay quite simple okay i'm pretty sure that you're that you're playing this without any hitch okay because this isn't too difficult, it's kind of a very simple finger style arrangement um, because um, it's mainly bass notes and, and very simple and clean melody notes. Okay, so it's not the hardest finger style arrangement um, you've ever encountered, I'm pretty sure. So uh, let's play this, let's play the second part and then move on to the third part because I think this needs no further explanation. So. A bass, B bass, C bass, D bass, then again A, B, and then D, C. Okay, I'm going with the bass note so you can hear the logic of the chord movement. Now without talking. line um, it's very nice it's this and then again okay or you can play the the harmonics instead of artificial harmonics you can use natural harmonics and play it like this then okay you can play it either way I'm gonna show you both um, so you play the A bass with five on the G string this time okay a simple E minor harmony it just outlines the chord and then take the take the five to four on the G string so you play four and put uh, your second finger on five on the bass, on the E string. Now it's a D string, so, okay? So it's G, it's outlining a G chord. And then take that uh, two frets back to two on the G string and three on the, uh, the E bass. So now it's an F chord outline, okay? But before that you play uh, the, you play the open E string once and then you play the bass along with the E string and then you play the G string okay so it's outlining an F major 7 chord okay because this is F major 7 and this is an F bass note so okay with an open E string so um, again 5 with the A bass, 4 with 
uh, the G bass, it's five on the bass. Open E string, then with the F bass, and the G string is on two. Okay, now the harmonic you want here is the one on the 12th uh, fret of the E string. Okay, so you can either play that. Okay, if you don't know how to produce a harmonic, then um, you just place your finger above the steel fret, okay, not above the, above the wood between the frets. You place your finger right above the steel fret. You don't press the string, you just touch it, and then you play it and let go and let it ring. Okay, so that's the harmonic you want. Now, if you want to keep the note ringing and you want to play, uh, you want to play the harmonic like this, like uh, an artificial harmonic uh, technique, then you play it like this. Okay, you let the chord ring. You put your finger above the fret again, and you pick with either your pinky, your third finger. Some like to play it with their second finger. I like to play with my third finger. Okay, so okay, you just pluck with the finger. You place your first finger and you pluck. So okay, so. Then again, okay, so, and now you have a choice, you play that again, and if you play it like this, then just play uh, another, uh, this was a natural harmonic because it's an open string, and now you play an artificial harmonic on 14 on the G string, okay, because that's 12 frets above the note you're playing. Okay, you're playing a note here, you're playing the A note on two, so it's 12 frets above that. Okay? So... If you want to play an open uh, harmonic, a natural harmonic, then play the harmonic on seven on the D string. Okay, it's the same note, it's an A note. Okay, it's an, an A harmonic. So we play 12 on the E string and 7 on the D string. Okay, so these are two choices. Or Okay, got it? So that's the next part. Okay? Now this is where the, the entire band comes in. So now we're playing um, we're playing a different rhythm actually. Up till now we played uh, we played a six eight rhythm. It was like it was like one two three one two three one two three four five six one two three okay count it one two three four Five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, that's the note, we, uh, the the rhythm we played. One, two, three, 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 one, two. Okay, you got the point. Now we're gonna play a straight four-four rhythm. Okay, uh, so it changes. It's um, it's da 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 da. Okay, it's now a, a four four rhythm. Okay, so it's um. Okay, you can play it clean like this. Or you can add some kind of rhythm, uh, okay? It's better that we talk about it now instead of when we learn it, okay? So now just try to listen to the rhythm. You can add, uh, you know, kind of hits on the string and on the guitar to accentuate the rhythm, or you can just add more bass notes. can hit the guitar.
okay? Sorry for that little mistake. I was trying to concentrate on this hand to try and demonstrate what to do. Uh, I like to add more bass notes, just add to the rhythm. But again, you can also play it clean because you're playing the finger style arrangement, you're not playing the original solo. So um, let's begin. Okay, um, as before, there are two endings. You play this, 5-5-5 five, five, five on the E string with the A bass on the first note. Okay, you can slide into it. Then 7 on the E string. Then you bar the 5th fret and you, you bar the 8th the fret with your pinky on 8 on both the E and B strings because you play this. Okay, so there's a small bar here as well. And you play 5 on the E bass along with the E string. Okay, so you play. Got it? It's a kind of a double bar. And then you play the, the, the same note, you play 8 on the B string, uh, but it's the beginning of the next line, okay? It's not, it's not in the previous uh, phrase, it's a new phrase, because it's, okay, it's, you have to move quickly, so. You bar the third fret this time, and put your pinky on five on the E string, and you play three on the E bass, and you play five five uh, on the E string again. Then open E string, and then the same thing, one fret back. Okay, two on the E bass, four on the E string. Okay, so it's. Okay, now you can play a bass basically with a bass basically with every note you play. So Okay, and you can also play the open D string along with the open E string and it sounds fine because it's it's kind of a solo, so it's Okay? That's another way to add rhythm to it. Now, if you are already fluent in finger style and you can add your own bass note rhythm there according to what you feel is necessary. For example, okay, something like this. You can make your own arrangement of this, I'm just teaching, teaching you the notes. You don't have to play my arrangement of this, you don't have to play it exactly as the original, you can play it uh, your own way. You can actually, I recommend trying to make your own arrangement of it and try to play with it and make it your own. Okay, excuse me. Try to make your own version of this. Okay, so this is the first line with the first ending. Okay, five, eight, and eight bar with your pinky. Five, four. Okay, all on the E string except four. 8 on the B string as well. Now you play the first two uh, the first two chords again. Okay, including this note at the end there which signifies the beginning of the next line. Um, and then you play Okay? It's the same transition. Only this time you play uh, you play the A notes a bit quicker, okay, so it's... And then 7 and 8 on the E string. And then you put this on again, on 2 and 4. And you do the same thing with 4, 4, 4, then 5 and 7 on the E string. Okay, now if you don't want to cut the, the bass note short, there's another way to play this. You can play it like this, okay? Okay, you can tap it. You can tap the 7 and 8. Okay, and then uh, tap the 5 and 7. Okay, you can do that as well. So, it's up to you. Okay, it's
it's up to you. You can choose to do this if, if this is comfortable for you and you think it sounds good, okay? Some people might say that it doesn't sound that good and they won't play it. And some people might think that it sounds awesome and they'll play it, okay? I have no opinion in this matter because I like both versions. Um, so, um, okay, I like the way that the bass notes kind of cut off here. But then again, I also like the way this sounds. Um, okay, it has its own kick. Um, I hammer on the note and then I slide to the second note. Um, okay, something like this. Um, okay, just hammer on the first note, slide to the second one. You can also, I think, hammer on both of them. Um, just tap both of them. Mm. Nah, doesn't sound that good. Um, just slide. Okay. Now, um, the another advantage of the tapping version is that it creates kind of a rhythm because the tapping creates a hit. Okay. So you also get the hit effect. That's only options. You don't have to do that. <clears throat> okay, so uh, this is the line with both endings. As if we haven't played them enough already. First ending. Second ending. Okay, the next line is this. Okay, and that has two endings of itself. The first ending is this. Um, um, and then you play it again. Um, and then you play the final ending. Okay? Um, the final ending phrase. So. You put your first finger on one on the B string and you play the A string along with it, you're actually again outlining an A minor chord. Okay, it's the same thing as this. Okay, but then uh, we needed to move here. Okay, we needed the G bass, so it was the logical uh, position, but here we need this. Okay? So it's more logical to play it here. So and both of them produce different sounds because this is a thin note and this is a fat note. So try to pay attention to this as well. Okay, and that way you also learn a little about arranging things into finger style. Um, so again, one on the B string with an open A string, then the open E string. Three on the B string, open E string again, okay? And then we need the same note again, we need this note, the C note, but we need to change the bass to G. So we're putting on this shape, okay? And we play three on the, uh, three, we play five on the G string with the pinky, okay? You'll understand why in a second. And with your third finger, you play uh, five on the D bass, okay? So it's, okay? So it's, okay? You play the note, you play the C note, and then you play the G bass. You play five on the G string first, and then five on the D string. And then, um, you can already put this finger, uh, the first finger on three on the, on the B string, or you can put it there after you play this, because you still, you have time, because you need this again, you need the open E string, three on the B string, and the open E string again, only this time you're on G, so, okay? So it's actually the same line with two different bass notes, and because we're in drop D, we need to change a fingering completely. So, okay, 
got it. So it's the A minor shape, then the G shape. Okay, put the first finger on three on the B string and play that again, E string, B string, E string. Okay, that's the line. Now for the endings. Uh, the first ending is this. Okay, it's a bar on the third uh, fret again, five on the E string again, and you play the bass along with that. Okay, just as you played it in the previous line. Only this time you take the pinky off and play three on the E string afterwards. Okay, so it's... And then on the B string, six and five. Okay? You can do it with your pinky, you can do it with two fingers, the, the pinky and the third finger. Okay, whichever is more comfortable for you. It's not in a high speed, so you can use the pinky for both notes. And then is this. You put your second finger on the second fret of the E bass, which is a D bass now. So now we're turning it back into an E bass. Okay, this is an E note now. Two on the bass. And along with it, we play uh, the open E string. Okay, so it's an E. It's an octave, but it's two octaves. Okay, because the first octave is here. Okay. It's two octaves apart. <clears throat> okay, so... And then, with our first finger, we pull off from 1 to 0 on the E string. And we play the open B string. So, it's very simple. Okay. So, the first ending was this. Got it? Um, and then we play this again. Then we put our third finger on three on the bass, okay? An F note again, the F bass note. And we play this, okay? With our first finger and pinky on the E string, one, three, one, zero, okay? Along the first note along with the bass. And then the E bass again, two on the bass, and uh, you play an open E string along with it, and then three on the B string. Right? And then the final line, uh, you can either pick, um, you can either prepare this on 1, 3, and 4 on the E string and just pull all of them off, okay? Or you can uh, do a more interesting version and interesting to play. It's the, kind of the same thing in the ear. The difference is very, very small. Um, and play 4, slide it to 3, pull off to 1, pull off to 0. Okay? Okay, the difference is very, very small. And then uh, the same thing on the B string, only this time without four, it's just three, one, zero. And then open G string. And then A minor, and you play uh, strings two, three, and five. Okay? I don't need to explain the A minor chord to you, I hope. Okay? Because if I do, then you're watching the wrong lesson. Um, and you need to work on the chords first. So. It's uh, okay, four, three, one, zero, three, one, zero, zero on the G string, A minor. Okay, so the second ending with the final ending line is this. Um, okay, uh, so along with it, with the entire line.
Now, before you go practice this, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. There's already a ton of lessons here waiting for you and go download the tab from the website. It's absolutely for free. And if you want to give something back for it or for this lesson or for any lesson, uh, or you just want to help me produce more lessons and make time to make more of these lessons, there's a donation button on the website. You can use it and I'd be very grateful for any donation whatsoever. It keeps Lick and Riff going. It makes it easier on me to free up more time to make these lessons. Now, um, you go practice this, go get this under your fingers, share this lesson with your friends, your enemies, your pets, your uh, imaginary friends, with anyone who wants to learn it. It's for free, and uh, in my opinion, musical knowledge should be free because music is great. Um, there's no way around it. You go practice now, have fun, let me know how it goes, and I'll see you the next lesson. Thank you very much for watching.